Good evening. Welcome. This tired, rainy evening. I'll kind of let everybody kind of gather in. How is everybody tonight? All right. Go ahead and get your Bibles out. That's what we're going to be doing. Go ahead and open up to Ephesians chapter 3. First, first I'll get started with announcements. What was I supposed to? What did you tell me to announce? Easter what? Oh, Good Friday service. That's what it is. Friday night. So on two nights, we have our, e our Good Friday service, and it starts at 6.30, night of worship. That's awesome. I'm excited about that. All right. Let's do the old-fashioned thing. Does anybody have any prayer requests? I feel like it just naturally is what we're supposed to do. Yes, Casey. Sister, this is what we're going to do. You may not like me for this, but this is what we're going to do. If you gave, if you spoke out and had a prayer request, come up here, and, and you're going to be the one to pray that out. And we won't necessarily do it on the microphone because I know some of them's personal. Um, so let's do that. So you guys go ahead. Don, won't you come up with Teresa, Javen, and we're like just we're just going to pray out these prayers. So, Jesus, we just, we just come to your feet. And we take all of our troubles and our worries and our fears and we just actively lay them at your feet. And we remember the work of your cross, of the cross, of the beatings that you took and the blood that you shed, that you 
took care of it all. And we just say thank you for that. So we come into your presence with thanksgiving tonight. So thankful for your goodness and for your mercy and that you have, like, God, that your word actually speaks a better word. Your word is speaking. Your word, your blood is speaking over each and every situation. Your blood is speaking. I love you. I love you. I love you. And we just thank you for that. And now, God, we just lay our needs at your feet. So, Robin, go ahead.
Thank you, guys. I don't have anything written down. I'm lying. I wrote down some scriptures. I need somebody to read Hebrews 9.14. Robin, can you do that? Hebrews 9.14. Scott, will you do Colossians 1.22? Jason, will you do, I think it says 2 Corinthians 11.2. Um, Don, will you do Song of Solomon 4 7? George, can you do Colossians 1 28? Terry, can you do Jude 1 24? Casey, can you do 2 Peter 3 14? Max, can you do Hebrews 12, 22 through 24? Who else? Uh, Debbie, you want to do 1 Thessalonians 5, 23? Everybody, anybody need me to repeat it? I kind of just shot that out there. Do you want yours again? Um, did I say Colossians 1, 28? Jude. Oh, 124. Yeah, it's the next one. Okay. Not yet. Let me let, let me let me gather my thoughts. Um, let's pray. Holy Spirit, we just ask you to sh- share what's on your heart and help us to go where you're going and to hear what you're saying. Pierce our hearts with your truth. I believe with my whole heart that God 
is making us ready for his return. I believe that he is preparing a people. He's purifying us for his return. And that the purification is coming. I feel like I don't know nothing about nothing, but I do feel like he's purifying. He's preparing a bride for his return. And the word says that his bride is going to be pure, spotless, without wrinkle, undefiled. And I think what my heart hurts for is that there's so much defilement and uncleanness in our own hearts and in the church. Um, And he wants us to address those things in our heart that um, is hindering his love. Um, I don't know why this is so hard, guys. I do not know why this is so hard. But I, 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 I believe that God is preparing Boonville Worship Center to be a church of deliverance. That we, he wants to teach us how to get people delivered of demons. He wants to teach us how to help people get healed. But it's all for the preparing of his return. It's not, I, I, I don't want to get sidetracked by the, by the ministry stuff. But I feel like, I feel like the, there's a precursor to us getting there. <laughs> like that we, like I have to address the things in my own heart that God wants me to address in my own heart. Um. Are you following me a little bit? (laughs) Okay, let's read some scripture and then we're going to go from there. So Hebrews 9, 14. Robin. like this is such a wildly powerful scripture we can take so much time on every single one of these scriptures but the one thing in that scripture where it says cleansing your conscience the blood of jesus will even cleanse our conscience and i feel like the thing one of the things that the that the enemy that the devil the devil prowls around and he accuses He goes before the throne 24-7, we know that, and he accuses me and you 24-7. So there's that constant accusation before us if we are not girded up with the shield of faith when the darts hit, that that the darts are dispelled, the darts die, the darts don't hit us. But I feel like the, 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 Like, we have junk coming from us from every single direction. On our phone, on our TVs. Like, I'm in the airport this weekend, and it's like everywhere in the Seattle airport, it was shoved down my throat immorality. Just walking through the airport. It's like everywhere we go, there's immorality, immorality. It's shoved down our throat, and we, and we become accustomed. A, a it's like we just get used to it. That's just a side note. I feel like the enemy wants to destroy us by just accusing us and reminding us that we're sinners all the time, rather than than us girding up and saying, no, I'm a child of God. (laughs) So this whole conscience thing, like this whole, like dealing with our conscience by the blood of Jesus through faith. How wild is it? How wild is it that you are considered righteous through your faith? You're not considered righteous through 
the right things that you do, although when we're in him, we do, we walk in righteousness. But he accounts me righteous because of my faith. So I can hold up the shield of faith and the enemy can throw that dart at me and say, you're a loser, you're an adulterer, you're this, you're that, you're not beautiful, you're not, you're not really loved. The people of Boonville Worship Center really don't love you, like these darts that come, that come, that come. But I can stand up with my shield of faith, with my shield of faith, and it's accounted to me as righteousness, and it dispels the lies of the enemy, and they don't have to touch me. That's just this whole cleaning our conscience. Like, if you're having a, if you're having a struggle in your conscience that you're constantly guilty or constantly full of shame, then this is a scripture that you need to absolutely take a bath in morning, noon, and night. Okay, next scripture. Colossians 1.22. I think that's you, Scott. Colossians 1.22. Go ahead and stand up and face the people. So if you're reading, go ahead and stand up and face the people. Come on, we only have 27 minutes, or 37 minutes left. 122. That's it. Go ahead, Jason. The point of all these scriptures is that he's making us holy and blameless and pure. There's a thing that's happening inside of us by the blood of Jesus. Go ahead, Jason. Second Corinthians eleven two. I'm not really sure what I'm saying tonight, other than he wants us clean, he wants us delivered, he wants us healed, and that uh, can I give you the key to all that? Resist the devil and he'll flee. It's so much easier than 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 what we make it. Don't get me wrong. There's ex- there's circumstances that 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 demon has lived there for years or generations. And it may be a fight, and it just doesn't come out and like just declaring that. But I promise you that whenever we get this violence inside of us, that when you resist the devil, he has to flee. Can I tell you something? I've been listening to a whole lot of deliverance stuff because I don't know anything about it. I feel like I need to learn something about it. So Don actually sent me uh, one of, um, what's his name? Michael, Michael Knowles interviewed a uh, Catholic priest. Fantastic interview. Um, but even before that, I've been kind of dabbling in. The Catholics do have a whole lot of deliverance stuff figured out. And I've learned a lot from them. Um, why did I say that? I had a really good point. Maybe I should make notes. I done forgot. It'll come back to me if I need to say it. Okay, so who's next? We're going to do Song of Solomon 4-7. Okay, so Song of this is just a little plug for Song of Solomon, but did you know in the book of Song of Solomon, not one scripture refers to your sin of every word that jesus speaks to you in song of solomon not one time does he refer to your sin he get he he says stuff like that the whole way through the only time sin is ever referred is in chapter one and she yep she says i am dark she she refers to her own shame but he combats that with truth of her beauty Okay, so next, Colossians 1.28. Was that George? All right. He's got a marked up, he's got a used Bible right there. Thank you. 
calling us to freedom, not just freedom, but to be free indeed. To be free indeed. Okay, Jude one twenty four. Who is that? remember what that priest that I heard this guy talk about. Okay, read that again. Sorry. I believe, just, I, I don't know what I'm talking about most of the time, but I'm pretty sure. I mean, if I can quote the word and say what the word's saying, we're good. So if I say anything besides that, then you can be like, Lori, that was not the word. Um, we can walk without sin. He just told us that he can keep us from falling in that word. He just told us, I can keep you from falling. And, and one of the things that one of these, Chad Ruppinger, I don't remember his name, some priest that I was listening to, but he said 60% 60 60 of people that come in to get free from um, demonic uh, demonization, 60% don't go through with it. Guess why? Because they don't want to suffer through it. They'd rather live with their sin. They'd, lev they'd rather live with the por por a por porn addiction. They'd rather live with the drug addiction. They don't want to suffer for a minute. And it, it just felt really profound to me because it's like, of course, because this is the day and age where it's, I'm in a hurry. Like, I'm in a hurry all the time. I'm trying to, like, let myself just calm down and not be in a hurry because that, that translates into every part of my life. Like, if, if, you know, things aren't right with my kids or if this isn't right, or it's like I'm just impatient and I feel anxiety and all that kind of stuff, but it's just because I don't want to suffer. And there's probably, it could be a whole teaching on that, but whenever there's a demonic attachment and who, like, I feel like we all probably have different viewpoints on, like, um, I don't even think a person can be demon-possessed. I feel like they can be demonized. I feel like that there can be demons on the inside of us that need to be cast out, but it doesn't mean that we can't, I, I feel like Christians, I know people's going to argue with me, but I do believe that Christians can be demonized. I feel like demons can be inside of Christians, because I know Christians that got delivered after they were born again. Um... But I also feel like that there's out, like, like th there can be an outside influence of a demon that's just constantly, uh, you know, gnawing at us, you know. Um, so anyway, so there's like all these different levels of activity that, that the enemy has on our life. But not one of them is outside of the blood of Jesus and not one of them is outside of resist the devil and he'll flee. And so it's like, the th I don't even know how we need to pray, but as intercessors, I feel like we need to awaken our prayer time. We, we need to awaken this thing for the ones that are struggling with, with habitual sin, like that, that cycle of sin, that is demonic. Like whenever you have a cycle of sin that you get rid of and then it comes back and you get rid, like that is demonic. And like whenever you have extreme urges, like extreme urges of temptation and and, you know, even if it's a small temptation, like whenever Jesus was tempted, he was tempted by Satan himself. You know what I'm saying? And it was an outside influence. Uh, my point is this, is, is he gives us all we need to be free. And I believe that, believe that he wants us all to be free. Okay. Next scripture. Did we do 2 Peter 3.14? Is that... 
Casey. Didn't even know that was the scripture that I was having to read. It's worth the link, it's, it's worth the season of suffering to become free because the devil's a liar. <laughs> like the whole suffering is because the devil's a liar. He's lying to us, telling us that we need something that we really don't need. But it's worth it. Go ahead, Casey, read that again, please. Why? because we can resist the devil and he'll flee. I want you guys to believe for your brothers and sisters for deliverance. Okay, Hebrews 22, 12, 22 through 24. Who was that? Was that Max? Yes. that scripture. I want somebody to stand up and tell me what the blood of Jesus is speaking over you because the blood speaks. Everybody say the blood speaks. Somebody stand up right now right now, and tell me what the blood is speaking over you or over your kids or over. I want to hear what the blood is speaking. You need to know what the blood is speaking. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. It's time. Yes. 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 Do you guys feel the presence of the Lord? I really feel the presence of the Lord. What is the blood speaking over you? Come on. Amen. Come on. That's right. That's right. There's nothing he can't take care of. Why so downcast, oh, my soul? I just did the discipleship class with the kids, and I had, they, I had him, them doing the same thing. They were all reading scriptures. And I had Lena reading the scripture, and the very first thing that says, be joyful always. I'm like, what? She said, be, be joyful always. Pray without ceasing. Never stop. Never stop. Did you just get a promotion? Go to the Lord. Did you just get fired? Go to the Lord. Is your kid being crazy? Go to the Lord. Are you bored? Go be with Jesus. Morning, noon, and night. Don't stop. I heard something this week. <laughs> Who posted it? Maybe you all saw it. 40% of people that are in the word like four to five times a week. I don't even remember the result of it. I was going to tell you something really good. I'm going to tell you this. 
There is such a hedge of protection around us whenever we cover ourselves in the presence of the Lord and we cover ourselves with the word of the Lord. There is, there is a protection over us that is wild. And whenever we resist the devil, he flees. Maybe I just need to say that all night. When we resist the devil, he flees. We can tell him, go to hell. Like, go, like, absolutely not. I'm not saying I have all of this figured out, but I am telling you, there's been things that I have battled, and then I've walked back into that battle, and there's, like, the, the gnawing of the enemy with these words, and I've began to train myself to not respond to it. To where a year ago, all of my emotions responded to it and I wanted to try to fix a thing. But whenever I realized that I'm dealing with a demon, like guys, if you know it's a demonic thing, do not play with it. <laughs> Cast it out. Cast it out. But there are certain things in my life where I've actually been able to be like, th like within seconds, I recognize what it is, and I'm like, eh, eh, you got to go. Sometimes it takes a minute, but for a minute, I'm going to be like, you got to go. Maybe six months ago, it took me half a day <laughs> or three days. But it's like we get to train ourselves. The more we do it, the more we realize that there's power in the blood and then it works. And then when we resist the devil, he has to flee. So when we have kids that are on drugs or we have all the stuff, we know people that are uh, hooked to all the stuff. Guys, we don't have to be like, we don't have to know anything. Like, we don't have to know all the theology. We got we to gotta know the scriptures that we just read that Jesus came to purify us completely and we get to resist the devil and he flees. I think there's one more scripture. So 1 Thessalonians 5.23. All right, thank you, Debbie. Read the whole thing again. Guys, read it slow. Close your eyes. Holy Spirit permeate. I refuse, I, I refuse to, I'm not doing a witch hunt, but I want to be aware. I actually found this exhaustive list of a sign that you're demonized, signs that you're demonized. And I've, I've read it once or twice. This is purely because we have people coming in saying, I need deliverance. 
I have people messaging me that aren't even a part of our church that are saying, I need deliverance. And I'm like going before the Lord going, I feel like I don't even want this microphone. Like, I just. But I'm like going before the Lord, like, I don't know how to do this, but we have to know how to do this. There's three things that Jesus continual, the, the, three, the three commands that Jesus said, preach the gospel, heal the sick, deliver people of demons. We're out of balance if we're not doing one of them. We need to stop making excuses that, oh, that's their personality. Um... I'm not saying there's a demon under every rock. Please get my heart, guys. Please get my heart. I don't want to do that. We're not doing that. I feel like that's my struggle with even talking about this because it's like I don't. It's like I don't even. I'd rather talk about other stuff, but I feel like that that God wants us to be aware of what He wants to do through us. I feel like that we know how to lay hands on the sick and they recover. We may not see them recover all the time, but I feel like that we're a people of faith where we do lay hands on each other and we have faith in the piercing and the stripes of Jesus. And we've seen people healed. I mean, people, I have been healed. Like who in this room has actually been healed supernaturally by the stripes of Jesus? So it's like, this is, we believe in this. Can we grow in it? Yes. Can our faith grow in it? Yes. Can we expand outside of the walls of the church? Yes. Many of us do. Um, but how many, you don't even have to raise your hand. You can raise your hand. How many people is even, I have never delivered somebody from a demon. Not on purpose. <laughs> right. I mean, I feel like there's been times whenever I have felt that, like, okay, something major is happening right here in this time of prayer. But to say, oh, there's a demon, you got to go. I've never done that before. And I'm not necessarily ashamed. I'm not ashamed to say that, but I feel convicted that Jesus called us to do three things. Preach the word. That's easy. Have faith for people to be healed. Deliver people of demons. So why am I reading this stuff and looking into this stuff? Because I want to be aware of what I'm dealing with. Because I feel like way too many people have passed us by that probably was in our presence for help. And we excuse it. Debbie, please, and then Robin. That's what Jesus said in response to the disciples not being able to cast out the demon. Thank you. Your grandpa didn't. He said no. What are you guys thinking?
remember I was talking to this girl Brandy on the phone. She was telling, she she teaches on deliverance, and she was like, Gloria, I don't even feel like I'm called to the ministry of deliverance. She said, but Jesus commanded me to do it. It's like not even fair for us to be delivered, but not give what we freely receive. I don't even know if I just worded that right, but it's like. Whenever Jesus called the 12, I don't know why that whole story of him gathering the 12 and sending them out to all the cities two by two, just a bunch of messed up guys that didn't even know that they be- if they believed what this guy was saying. They had faith that Jesus was Messiah. They knew that. That's why they stayed. And he said, freely you've received, freely give. He said, I give this to you. The power of God is inside me and you. And he's called us to this. It feels really weighty to me, but I feel like it's not as weighty as I feel. I feel I, I feel the weight of sin and I feel the weight of people being stuck. I feel the weight of people being in addiction. Like it like my heart is so broken for certain people that I love, and it's like, God help us. I don't think I've ever had anybody message me about being delivered for the last month. I've had multiple people say, I need help. Or, I need trained. Thank you for bringing that back around. Right. Um, yes. And I feel like we're all in a diff- we're all in different places. You know, maybe some of us are just ready to go. We just need the whatever, you know. But some of us simply are bound by the lie that we don't know how to do it. And and we're actually in mixture because we don't believe the power that lies inside of us. Like just not believing in, remember the table of the blood and the bread, just not believing that, that, that he would work that. Like just that is mixture. Some of us actually have sin that we don't want to give up. And... I'm so glad that you brought that up because it makes me really want to go back to that scripture because I didn't realize that that's what that scripture said of why the demon wouldn't come out. It only comes by prayer and fasting. Um, Some of us need to get free ourselves. That it's not, it's not, I don't believe that it's a condemning thing at all. It's like a joyful thing for people to be like, I want free. Like if somebody walked into this sanctuary and was like, I want free, like everybody in this sanctuary is like so over the top, like, yes, yes, we want to see you free and we want to see you free indeed. And the enemy wants to put it under shame. And it's like, especially those of us who have been here for 30 years, it's like, oh, I should have done, dealt with that. But God's like, God's like, I mean, there is no shame and condemnation whenever we're in him. It is a joyful thing to celebrate what he wants to do in us. 
So I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know what to say. Does anybody else have anything to say? Because maybe we just need to take the last five minutes and just pray. Is, is there any other thoughts in the room? Things that I said that you didn't agree with or felt like wasn't biblical, I'm all for it. Lot of times we would think, oh, it's it's the man that was cutting himself and cutting himself with fire. But we don't see it as the person that's going to punish our punish Adam, right? Or punish the president or this or that. And society would see it as so many different things that we see within the body. But they let Jesus keep coming down here. That there's something that's going to capture them and happen to them or this or that. And we just kind of just you know, hey, keep going boldly in your faith. But the one thing I was thinking about authority is we all understand authority in a certain realm. Like, I'm supposed to follow those type of kids. So I know with my kid, let's say a teenager, which is what you were saying, Brandon. Then you have, the rest of us know that as parents, we can walk up to our teenagers and literally say, hey, you need to stop. Or you need to quiet down. You need to be more like, we just don't need to see that level of authority just because in my natural identity as parents or what have you, or maybe as a leader, blah, blah, blah. So what greater authority do we have as the one that has all authority inside of us? So we don't have to battle anything. We recognize that. So we need to learn to step into authority. And when someone that we love is battling that stuff, and they, they and, and there's that process of this when people want to be free. But when people say they want to be free, let's say then we have all authority in the name of Jesus and all those things that you just given to bind that thing and break it off in Jesus' name. So I think one of our oldest kids, and for me, one of the greatest things is, like, like I know the, the realm of my life that I have authority in, in the natural. Like, I can step in authority at the cost of your parents and different things or in my home or this or that. But sometimes in the spiritual realm of dealing with some of these things, right, again, it's like I feel like there's been even intimidation of the enemy that makes us question whether or not we have authority in that, that process, right? It's like, no, we don't. We do have all authority, right? We have all authority in us, and he's given that authority to go forth in righteousness. And part of us praying into this and learning this more is to recognize what what demonic activity is, right? And it's not always something that's like sometimes with our loved one that we can have and say, we're telling them, hey, hey, stop doing that, stop doing that, stop doing that. No, we need to help them recognize what has a grip on them and get them in an agreement that want to be free and, and with them and the blood of Jesus takes authority and commands that addiction to be broken off of them in Jesus' name. So I just think learning how to step into the authority and it's just done in Jesus' name. Yeah, that's really good. First, this is this is what I told my discipleship group. By the way, that little room was full. There was even kids sitting on the floor showing up at six fifteen for discipleship. Isn't that cool? <sighs> yes, more begging to come in. So, this is what I challenge you to. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I know how weak I am at times. Every day. This is what the pre this is what I learned from the priest from that from Father Chad. He said the people that stay free are people that are devoted to their daily prayer and devoted to their daily reading of the word. That's what I commission you to, and that's what I commission me to. Because our authority is flat because of mixture. And the way mixture comes in is because we don't commit our time to the Lord. Like I said, all I did was spent two hours at the Seattle airport and it was shoved down my throat. It's going to be shoved down our throat everywhere we look. I mean, we know that. So why do we think that Sunday morning worship and Wednesday night church 
is enough to feed us. It is not. Like, that is a dangerous lie of the enemy. I mean, I told those, I told those kids, if you're not spending time with the Lord, commit to 15 minutes a day. But all y'all that are mature, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you to a good 30 minutes or an hour a day. Get up early. Suffer. Why are we not getting free? Because we don't want to suffer through the hard stuff. We spend time with the Lord and we love being with the Lord, but then we go and we taste all the things of the world and it, and it dulls our appetite for the Lord. So then when it's time to go back and be with the Lord, then it's like it feels boring or it feels whatever. It doesn't feel as, you know, as enjoyable as watching a great movie. You know what I'm saying? But, but like God is calling us to be a pure and spotless bride. And so that's what I challenge you with. Are you guys good? Let's pray. Let's all stand. Let's throw our hands in the air. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, you are the one our heart longs for. We turn our hearts to you, God, and we ask you, God, to forgive us, that you would remove defilement from us, that you would raise the, aware, the level of discernment in our very own lives, God, to deal with the enemy's devices in our life, that we no longer will play with the enemy, oh God. God, we cry out to you, let heaven come on earth as it is in heaven. God, we want to see you. We want to know you. We do not want to be distracted even by the ministry of what we're talking about, but you are our distraction and you are the one that our soul longs for. And our heart breaks when we see those that we love in, in, um, in brokenness and in being demonized, oh God. Let us become a people that deliver. <laughs> Let us be your deliverers on earth, God. Help us, God. We, we're saying, God, we don't know how to do this fully, but God, we're going to take steps of faith to begin to walk out the preaching of the word, the laying the, our hands on the sick and they'll recover, and for the demoniac to be delivered on earth as it is in heaven. So God, we cry out for ourselves to be delivered. Show me, show me the wicked ways within me, God, for real. God, let us really become vulnerable before you and before our brothers and our sisters. And then, God, use us for your glory and for your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, this is how God revealed himself on the earth. Think about it. Jesus told his disciples, if they don't believe the message, they're going to believe what they see that you do. <laughs> Love y'all. Bye.